It may come as a surprise to some, but Christ has been reigning over his kingdom for almost 2,000 years now. Now, there are many theories pertaining to the reign of Christ that have been put forward with various ideas about when he will begin to rule. Dates have been set. Fantastic tales about future splendor of Christ's reign on this earth have been told. But all of these theories, inter they completely miss the mark and fail to recognize that Jesus Christ has been reigning gloriously in his kingdom for centuries. In fact, he is still doing so at this very moment. God revealed to Old Testament prophets that Christ would be raised up to sit upon the throne of David in a great eternal kingdom. God told David in 2 Samuel 7 verses 12 and 13, and when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Notice that one of David's sons was to reign on David's throne forever in a kingdom which God would establish. Well, centuries later, after Christ had gone back to heaven, just ten days later, Peter said that this prophecy was fulfilled. He told the Jews that God had foretold through David that he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, Acts 2, verses 30 and 31. Now note that the resurrection of Christ was defined by Peter to be the fulfillment of of all the prophecies which said that God would raise up a man from David's descendants who would sit on David's throne. But did Christ really occupy the throne of authority after his resurrection? Well, certainly he did. Jesus himself said years later in his revelation to the Apostle John, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne, Revelation 3.21. The throne of David was a position of kingly authority over God's kingdom, and Christ arose and was exalted to that throne, which we see described here as also being God's throne, where Christ is sitting next to his heavenly father. The fact that he is now reigning over his kingdom is often set forth in the New Testament. For we read the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 25, For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Notice that Christ is reigning right now and will continue to do so until he puts all his enemies under his feet. Well, if Christ is reigning, then his kingdom is already established and in operation. He is not reigning over an empty kingdom without subjects. To this, all of Scripture is in agreement. Paul told the church in Colossae that the Father hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, Colossians 1.13. But I also want you to observe something. I want you to notice that whenever Paul was speaking of this kingdom, he talks about it being a privilege, something that we enjoy being a part of. Now, if this kingdom was not in existence and in operation with Christ actively reigning over it, then why were they said to be in this kingdom? Why was it a joy and a privilege to be in this kingdom if the kingdom is not an establishment? Well, simply put, from these and many other passages, we can see that Christ is very much a king and that you and I today can be in his kingdom. His kingdom is the church which he built that was established with great power in the city of Jerusalem after Jesus' ascension to heaven. But the way that we are added to this body, the way that we get to the point where Christ is reigning over us as a part of his church is very simple. We do so by placing our faith in him, repenting of our sins, confessing Christ as our Lord and Savior, and being baptized for the remission of our sins. When we do this, we're told that the Lord will add us to the church, and we will be able to joyfully await in hope his return from heaven to take us to that eternal home.
Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today, and have a blessed day.